Levicrofting, Witcher cosplay, commissions. Hey guys, what's up? It's Susan here. I had a dear friend reach out to me and ask me to make series corset from this Witcher 3 fan art by Klaus Whitman. And I jumped at the chance and asked for a few more details in that order. Levi's a blacksmith, the village blacksmith in fact, and he wanted this armoured corset made for him to do a demonstration at the Sydney Queer Medieval Fair on April 30th. The links will be in the description. So, I had the artwork to use as a guide, a due date, Levi's measurements, and the direction to be inspired by, rather than my usual fare of minute accuracy. Levi wanted buckles down the front rather than buttons, and who am I to argue for more buckles? What I did not have, because I forgot to ask, was Levi's permission to use his name and likeness, which is why you're about to hear me refer to him obliquely for the first bit of this video. Okay, so... I don't actually know what Intro Grant just said because I'm filming this before I've made the thing. This is the first part that I'm actually filming and what I'm going to do. So I'll make a prototype. No, I need a pattern. I need a pattern before a prototype. It's been a while since I've done this. I'm gonna take the measurements. I'm gonna create a pattern. I'm gonna cut the pattern out of paper and then I'm gonna make a prototype and... This is gonna be something that I'm making for someone apart from me to wear, so it's not even like I can really try it on, but I guess I can make a prototype and see how close it is to the measurements that I've been given. And if I like the prototype, then I'll go ahead and start making the thing. So let's cut to me drawing. This one might actually be the best one to make this out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a mock-up out of cloth so that I can post it to my mysterious benefactor who can try it on and let me know anything that needs to be altered before we make the final piece out of leather. And because I'm making a mock-up out of fabric, that means that you guys are going to be treated to an old staple trope of CosTube. That's right. It's close-up footage of scissors cutting fabric. Enjoy. And welcome back to a set that we haven't seen for a while. My floor. After laying everything out on the largest work surface I own, I traced the pattern onto the goat hide with my silver pen, and if you're serious about leather crafting, I cannot recommend these things enough. I'm gluing the fabric to the back of these leather panels to reinforce it, which is actually a period technique. Of course, in medieval times, they wouldn't have used spray adhesive. Then it was time to dye the leather. I like to dampen it slightly with water before applying two layers of dye.
And now that we've all been patient little people waiting for the dye to dry, it's time for an excellent step for using up scrap bits of leather, and that is cutting strips to do a French seam. Anyone who works with fabric is going to be understandably confused, but it'll all make sense. The next step in our process is going to be cutting strips that are going to sit face to face along these edges, and then be folded around to sit back to back on the back of it. As to why this is called a French seam and something totally different using fabric is also called a French seam, why don't you guys go and look that up and let me know. That, that's your homework. You gotta, you gotta go and find out and let me know so that I can let people know in the next video. Now traditionally this step is done with a strap cutter but I fucking hate using my strap cutter and I keep getting it wrong so you guys are going to be treated to watching me struggle along with an X-Acto knife and a ruler. Enjoy! Now we're at the part that I said would make sense later, so let's see if I can make good on that process. These strips are going on the straight edges of the panel, and the French seam is going to mean that these get glued on face down, butting up to the edge. This is how it's going to look. So accounting for what I lose in the bend here, I'm going to have close to 20 mil worth of leather going down the back, and that's going to give me a nice meaty substrate to put a pretty decorative stitch in the front, and that's how we're going to finish off these three edges. The curved edge is different. When we do these edges, I'm going to do some much wider strips and they're going to have to be formed with a little bit of a tension rather than just cutting straight rectangles out of leather. So that's why we're doing these three edges now and you'll see what I pull out of the hat for these curved edges. And just briefly, this is why I keep gushing on and on about the silver pen that I have for marking leather. You can see that even though this is a very dark shade of chocolate brown that is fast approaching black, I can still see those 10mm seam allowances that I marked before I dyed the leather. And let me tell you, being able to preserve that geometry through a layer of dye as dark as this is just actually priceless. When folding these edges over, I want to get plenty of water into the seam so that it'll hold its new folded shape, and then plenty of glue onto the back to, you know, glue it together. It's a little bit awkward, as you can see. What we're using here is a synthetic bone folder to really get that seam absolutely as flat as it'll go. And I'm also trying to make it look good for the camera, so you know, don't feel compelled to hold it at the weird angles that I'm holding it.
Now then, the trim for all three of these sides has just been scrap goat hide from what was left when I cut these shapes out. But the trim that I'm going to use for our squiggly side is going to be some black kangaroo hide that I had laying around, which is obviously going to show up atrociously on the camera, but there are a couple of reasons that one would choose to use kangaroo leather, and chief amongst them is its incredible tensile strength. Kangaroo leather is generally what bull whips are made out of, and that's because you can get an incredibly thin slice of kangaroo leather, and it, it just, it won't break. Obviously this is like two inches thick, so this isn't good for example purposes. And um, the other reason that I'm using it is because I had all of this scrap laying around and waste not want not. Good morning. Here's to all of my homies watching this in the AM. The reason that I wanted to use such thick strips of such a durable and hard wearing leather is because these curved seams are where the lacing for the corset is gonna be anchored. So I didn't wanna put an eyelet through just a single layer of goat hide and linen interfacing. This kangaroo hide reinforces it to be thicker and it's amazing for the strain that the lacing will put it under. Speed montage! Next, I quickly got the tacit panels up to speed so they'd be in the same state as the corset panels. They're very similar construction. These are lined with calico instead of linen, and instead of a full French seam on the edges, I just did a fold. This was to reduce bulk and make them more able to sway nicely in the breeze when they hang from the corset. Now, I could get nice and settled in to saddle stitch the lot of it. Hey guys, just thought I'd interrupt the video so that we could have a candid moment and have some real talk for a second. So here's the deal. I'm just happily stitching away, and you can see I've taken the stitching pony down and just put it on my chair. I have bursitis in my left shoulder. What that means is, oh, God damn it, one of the tendons in my arm is inflamed. And when I move my shoulder in particular directions, that tendon pinches, and it's rather painful. I wasn't able to saddle stitch up on the bench. All of this is not to be taken as some kind of hustle grind set. There's always a way. If you don't find a way, then you're not looking hard enough. Bullshit, because not every problem can be solved. This is more to say, if you can solve the problem, great, good on you. But if I couldn't have done this, I wouldn't be stitching this right now. So this is more to say that even though we all suffer for our art, there's no reason to have to suffer for your art. And if you can find a way to do something more easily, that is kinder to your body or your mind, really you owe it to yourself to do it that way. So to anyone who's got this video on as background noise while you're making your latest project, I hope that you're taking care of yourself. I hope that you're being easy on your body. 
Odds are it's a fragile human body. And these things suck. They're really prone to breakdowns. Oh no, that's, that's all I had to say. Back to the video now. Then it was time to make the straps and buckles. Again, I hate my strap cutter, so I used my nice knife. The rest of the process was your standard fare. Beveling, dyeing, skiving, burnishing the edges, and then saddle stitching along those edges before attaching the buckles, which I opted to rivet in place. Back to the corset proper, and there were precious few steps remaining before it was time to seal and ship the lot. And chief among those steps was setting the eyelets along the curved edge. I measured out the distances, marked each spot with a scratch awl, and set the eyelets with a little eyelet anvil. The final touch before sealing was one of the most important ones, signing my work. Ever since I got this stamp, I've loved using it to sign my pieces. It makes it feel much more intentional and artistic. And then the ceiling was achieved with three generous coats of pure Neats Foot Oil over the entire thing. I am a huge proponent of Neats Foot Oil. Not only is it probably the least toxic chemical that I've put on the leather in this video, but it makes it so supple and soft. It does darken it a shade, but it develops this beautiful natural patina over time. So the longer that Levi wears this corset, the better it's gonna look. And now it is in with the laces and off to the races. I'm just using some paracord, but I have put an aglet on the end of it to make it a little bit fancy. It's happening, today's the day. I'm just about to leave to go up and make delivery to Levi. So you can see I've got the panels sitting here on the bench and I've got my little go bag packed with all of the pieces that I'm going to need. So just because of the nature of this, I'm going to want to attach the buckles once I'm there just so that we can ensure the fit is going to be perfect. And then once the fit is sorted, we're going to add the buckles, add the button, and then attach the tassets on the side and, you know, hopefully get some cool aesthetic footage of Levi smithing in his new armored corset apron thing. I'm really excited. This is the biggest commission that I've ever done and I really hope that he likes it. So once you come along with me uh, on a hour and a bit drive up to Sydney and then and then we'll see hopefully Levi is as pleased with the outcome of this as I am.
Well, that was the reveal. I'm excited with how it turned out. I hope that you are pleased with it, Levi. Dude, it's comfy to wear. It it's super comfy. It fits like a glove. I'm, I'm just happy that you were able to comfortably blacksmith it. <laughs> Dude, it's so nice. It hugs. It fits like a glove. It's like it was tailor-made. <laughs> yeah, like it was made to fit or something. Uh, well, I'm very happy that you're happy with it. It was an absolute joy to Dude. put together. And thank you for asking me to make it Mate, for you. I'm so happy. I'm so <laughs> pleased to have this piece that you made. No, and wow. if you, dear viewer, want to see this piece in person, Levi will be wearing this at the Queer Medieval Fair. So if you're in the Sydney area and you're free on April the 30th, I'll put links in the description so that you can see what that's all about. And you can come by and watch a blacksmithing Come down, watch us work. And yeah. It's going to be fantastic, please. Oh, man. And you know what else? It was so cool just like having the impromptu session, like you tinkering on the anvil, me putting the finishing touches on. Oh, what job should be. I know, right? Everything's just going, everything happening, everyone working. It's, it's collaborative. I haven't gotten to, I haven't gotten to hang out and work with other makers <laughs> since like COVID. So. Awesome. Oh, thank dude. you. Oh, bring it in. It's been so good, man. It's been so good to see you. I'm so glad that you enjoyed it. Mate, it all just started with an image and it all came together. It really, look, honestly, I don't mean to toot my own horn too much, but, no, you know, humbly no, I put no. it to you that it did all come together. It did. <laughs> Guys, if you're still here, thank you so much for watching this whole long ass video. It really means the world to me. Don't forget to check out Levi the Village Blacksmith and the Sydney Queer Medieval Fair. Like, subscribe, click all the links, take it easy, and I'll see you next time.